Um, thank you all for coming tonight. Um, I should I should say that many of you know it is a special evening for me personally because Sukita is a is a very close friend and colleague and someone for whom I have enormous respect. Um, he is currently. Uh, teaching at the Department of Archaeology of the Royal University of Fine Arts, which is the alma mater of many people in the room. Um, he is also currently completing a PhD, a, a long-lasting PhD project, which many of you will identify with, um, which, is, which is a fascinating piece of work and um, I think will make a, a very important contribution to, um, to the field of Southeast Asian art. Um, he is also um, a very... Um, a very active uh, member of the Ministry of Culture at the moment in Phnom Penh and doing some very important work, um, which I see obliquely in the research that he's presenting here tonight. Um, so I thought I would just say a little bit about the research as I have understood it in a sort of preliminary viewing of it. Um, just a couple of words about it. It seems to me that he's doing some very interesting work on what could fall under the large rubric of localization. Um, thinking, I think, in very interesting and somewhat new ways uh, about processes of localization. So something, at least for the students who, who have been working with me over the course of the year, to keep in the back of their minds, I hope, as you listen to his work here. Um, and then also, and this is where I see some of his work in the Ministry of Culture over the past decade in Phnom Penh coming into play. That is, he's, he's effectively dismantling this artificial distinction that we make between tangible cultural heritage and intangible cultural heritage. That is, um, because UNESCO <laughs> is out there, because uh, ministries are out there, um, and because art historians are out there, we um, tend to think there is something called material cultural heritage which is distinct from immaterial cultural heritage or tangible versus intangible. Um, and in fact, he's responsible for um, doing a lot of the development um, of uh, Cambodian governmental requests to international organizations for protecting uh, intangible cultural heritage over the past couple of years. Um, but that work, and including the work that you'll be seeing tonight, demonstrates very effectively that you can't think the one without the other, that the two really, really work together and they're not separable and you have to be agile enough in your research to be thinking about how they work together. Today in particular, thinking about um, how the art is embedded in and responding to and developing out of play, as he calls it, in language and ritual. So two things that we think of as being immaterial, but they are materialized in very, very important ways in what we're looking at here. Um, so those two things, intangible, intangible, and localization are really at work. And then the last thing that I see coming out of his work um, is methodologies for reading narratives, okay? Again, uh, you'll be familiar, a lot of you will be familiar with, with the methodologies and with the kinds of questions he's asking and with the, um, some of the people who he's talking about and how they think about narrative. Um, I'm thinking bas reliefs narratives or mural narratives. Uh, the, I'm making a kind of indistinction between painted murals and sculpted murals at the moment. But, um, but he's thinking about um, some of it will be fi quite familiar to you, but I think he also brings in some new approaches to reading narrative, which is really um, potentially of, of real importance. So, um, so in hoping that Sopiedet's English shines tonight, um, <laughs> and all of this will be easily accessible to all of you, um, please join me in welcoming Sopiedet. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Thompson, for very kind introductions, and I hope you bear with my English, and then I try to explain. And I, uh, this work is it have been um, I have been working in Angko and you know like other temples like one uh, like many other of my colleagues, try to understand you know what exactly uh, the temple itself you know like what it means to the Cambodian people right now back then, and then you know like by looking at how how can we decoding or deciphering the you know, like bar reliefs and stuff like that. And then this is one of the works that I have been observed uh, through my observations by going to the temples and then to see what it is, you know, like 
what, what, why they are carving these uh, uh, reliefs, you know, like what does it mean to um, people back then and what, what are we looking at, at, at them now? And this is what I am I'm, I'm trying to uh, bring to you, uh, you know, so some kind of uh, new ways of looking at it, but not just only look at the art objects, but try to bring other uh, um, elements, for example, what language can play in it and how, uh, you know, rituals can shape uh, the, the artist or the artisans at the time, you know, like how can, what, what inspire one another in, in, that, in that way. So um, I, I think many of you have been visiting the uh, you know temples in Cambodia or in other countries. You might be familiar with the place where the decorations or the motifs are depicted. You know, like uh, for example, uh, you, it is on the lintels or in pediment, pilasters, flints. You know, like on the you know like on the grounds, columns or door jams and etc. And in in those places. And sometimes it is very hidden, you know, like why they're, they're the point that, you know, like they're in a dark side, in a dark place, in a very hidden, um, um, you know, in uh, underground or something, you know, like at, um, on the ground or something like that. So the, the, the depictions of that uh, motif, uh, such, such as, for example, flo florals, does it, you know, uh, flowers, motifs of flowers, uh, does it make sense? Why they are picking it up? You know, like those are the questions that I am very curious about about learning, about understanding what inspired picking up that uh, kind of motifs, you know, like uh, th there might be some things, you know, some of them are non-narratives, non non some of them are real um, narratives, what are, what are the, the story that they are talking about? So today, at this time, I'm, I'm not focusing on um, uh, non narratives and um, uh, floral motifs or some other uh, elements but uh, to to focus on narratives what are those um, what were the the release for you know why why are they using I just um, uh, throwing up the question you know why what, what it is what what are they for you know what what why why it is important this is the you know like some of the the, the scholars um, Robert Browns. Uh, those of you who, who who have done the research in art history might be familiar with his name, and then um, in in the work that he's associated with the um, the Buddhist art, and then he just uh, uh, saying something like uh, you know like those re those reliefs that are on the temple. It doesn't mean it doesn't was not intended to tell the stories, but they they have its own function. It doesn't mean like you know. They carve and then it's gone, but they have its own function. To him, he is he he took it as the iconic function. It has the like the, you know they play the roles as an icon, as the presence of the the gods or or something like that. And in a, a way that he has looked closer into um, Cambodian context, he worked on Angkor, um, uh, Angkor Wat in particular. The way that he see Angkor Wat, for example, the bar relief is very long, sometimes sixty meters long. Uh, 50 meter long and it's about uh, 500 meter in, in total of the carvings around the third galleries of um, Angkor Wat that it, it's called Reliefs Gallery. But when he look at it, he say, he posted, he, he, he say that it, it might not be read by walking by them, you know, like, uh, and then what is the point, you know, uh, is it exactly like that? I, 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 I try, I try to understand whether it, it, it made in, in such a sense or not. To my understanding, the ways that I observe, I see it as when the, when the, the bar reliefs are carved, they are carved to, it means the present, to show, to demonstrate the present. The present of what? The present of uh, the, an event, the present of animals, the present of uh, 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 a god, uh, a story of the king, something like that. Why is that so? Because if, if you imagine the imagination of Cambodian people, the temple itself is symbolizing the universe. It means that it is whatever happening, it's happening at that time. You know, we are in the in Indian uh, uh, cycle of time. It is a kalpa. It means like the four yogas. One, it is have been destroyed, and then it happened again. So this is in particular moments that it is happening. A story, for example, a story that is depicted, for example, this is the bar relief at Angkor Wat, showing King uh, Suryavarman II uh, in, 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 the, in, the in the 12th century. He is giving the audience to that, but 
the inscription itself saying that that is the uh, giving the posthumous name of the king, saying that the king who has gone to the world of the sup the highest world of vision already. I mean, this is the record. This is the record of that time at that time um, at that time in that space at that moment in that universe within that uh, that exactly order. That's what I see. Why it is represented? It has to be like that. It has to be. In, in, in the ways that you know, like everyone is in that uh, circumstance, in that, that time and space, and this is also exactly the same. The, this is the, to show the procession of the king, and this is the, the battle, the battle of uh, Kurukse in in the Mahaparata. That is the, the final battle between the two bra the two cousins, the um, Kaurava and Pandava. They are fighting one another. Why they are showing it? One of the scholars, um, uh, uh, I, I um, uh, Thomas. Um, Thomas Maxwell, he worked on the, the bar reliefs like that. He made a proposition that the bar reliefs of Angkor Wat itself is representing time, the four time, the Krita Yuga, the best one, the uh, Dvarapar Yuga, uh, um, no, Treta Yuga, Dvarapar Yuga, and Kali Yuga, which is, which is now. That is the representation of time that is designed in Angkor. We don't have, we don't have you know, like many examples like that. But if you are going to, for example, uh, by Yuan, by Yuan Temple. When you walk, you you, you walk in Cambodian counting from inside out, uh, from uh, from outside into. You know, like one, two, three. You are approaching the higher. You know, the higher the number, the the, the better is in, in that in that case. So by Yuan, if you are by Yuan is the temple that built in um, at the end of 12th century, beginning of the uh, uh, 13th century. When you are go walking in, you you first you encounter the bari leaves that depicting daily life. Why are daily life depicted over there? And then you are approaching the, the epic, you know, like uh, themes of God associated with ascetic, associated with uh, myth in, uh, uh, mythologies and stuff like that. So when you are getting higher, it, it gets the emptiness. You know, like, uh, the so my point here is that it is uh, something that to show the presence, the presence of something in time and space, in, in that universe which is symbolized by uh, uh, the, the temple itself in Cambodia we, we, we call that you know like in uh, Ptom the mountain it means the, the, the Meru the Mount Meru that is what they symbolize and also why they are depicting you know like certain episodes are depicted the ways that I am I'm reading it I'm, I'm not declaring or claiming that I am correct but that is what I I try to understand myself too Based on some inscriptions, in the, this is the earliest inscriptions that known to have one of the earliest. I'm not saying the earliest, the sixth century uh, inscription that's talking about one of the Brahman made the copies of the uh, Purana, Ramayana, and Parata. We, at, at that time, we didn't call Mahaparata like us. But, uh, we call it Parata, and that. Why he making the the copies of that? He made the copy and then it providing to give it to the temples and ask them to recite it uninterruptedly, you know, like a recitation of that stories. And what is the point of reciting the, those stories for? There, there, there are certain. I, I'm, I'm, I try to understand. This is that is the sixth century. There, there are evidence of saying, you know. Um, in the twelfth, in in, in the eleventh uh, century, the king saying that you know reciting the uh, Mahaparata, Purana, Ramayana, those are to cleanse all the sins. You know, like there there are certain functions in recitations, and also depicting of it. And why wh wh why am I, why am I raising this? Because I see the depiction of an epic. It is the recitation continuously at the site, at the temple. That's what I see. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm correct, but uh, that's what the way that I see. Why, why, it, why is that so? So this is what I'm, I'm thinking. And to, by to, uh, by to uh, uh, Robert Brown. And I think that, you know, um, those na narratives are mean to tell the stories, or at least a reminder, and add me more, uh, something that you see and then, oh, I know. That is a story, you know, like something that wake you up or telling you, informing you about what is going on. And this is a bas relief at Angkor Wat again. It's very typical 
examples of it. This is the, the theme, the theme about heaven, heavens, and hell, and hells. We have uh, 32, uh, 32 hells and 33 heavens in, in that. So I'm saying that it tells the story because they're, they're, the writing, the inscriptions, inscription telling you, tell the, the inscription saying these two paths about leading you to heaven. What is the point of having it if not to, if not, if, if it will not meant to tell the stories about something. And this is, you know, like these are the, 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 the inscription that informing us about something, you know, like, or at least to my understanding, to, uh, if I, I might think of it, at least it's a point of reference. You say, oh, uh, you know, like if you want to see the hells, you go to Uncle Wat, you see the barriers, that, that's something that is uh, reminding or it tells you about uh, what is happening. And it also, you know, like it is again, this is hell, it's called Abhijay, Abhiji in the, uh, and that it is the, the, you know, descriptions of what is going on, you know, like, what what made you uh, to fall to uh, to fall into hell? It is hell, and it said that if you are uh, you have properties, you are good enough, but you still do some you know like bad deeds, you know like ripping off someone else, bit of, even though you are rich, and then that is going to the hell called Aviji. And then there, there there are many hells that have that short inscription. And what is that for? You know, if you say no one going to read, maybe. Maybe some people will, will read, you know, or someone that is written down and say, go to that place and then you see. It, it's a point of reference and it also something that tells you the, uh, the story too. That's that, that my argument. I'm not uh, going totally against him. And one of these, uh, the, the, this uh, reliefs about, we don't know, but the inscription tells us that the deer is his fish, uh, his, uh, his food. They, they, that is for the inscription that tell. You know, if, if, it, it, if it is not to, meant to tell, why there is a confirmation that you n make sure that you know that it is, uh, ex uh, make sure that you understand that this is the deer. It, 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 it doesn't mean that the fish making um, sin, you know, like by eating the deer. But that is the law. You know, you eat <laughs> the deer is my food. You know, like that it doesn't mean that I commit the crime or sins in that, in that case. So w why it is telling you that? Because I think that, that the way that uh, uh, it meant to tell something, it doesn't mean that you know, like you people are going walk walk by and in the in the 12th century. In, in this is another thing. This is a door frame, and this is the processions of the king. It 12 um, 12th century by Yuan Temple, famous one. If you have the opportunity, you will see this one. But if you see that from the back side. They, they, they meant to tell you that they make a right turn, but where? We do not know. One in an important, important event that happened to these people that they really remembered and carved it. You know, they walk and they, they, they go inside. And to my understanding, it is connected to the, third, the, the second gallery inside. There is a, a victory uh, section, one, one small victory section there. And I think that is somewhat associated in, in that case. So it, it meant to tell something. I, and going back to the 16th century, 16th century, Angkor Wat is not finished. Angkor Wat is big, but it northeast corner uh, sections of the gallery, gall uh, reliefs gallery, was not done. And when the king in the 16th century, it's called Ong Chang, uh, he came and then he said that you know like he, he commissioned for the carving of that uh, of that spot, and what it, what is important? They say, they call that narrative they call that place, chlak han mije mije it means to speak in Khmer, chlak it means to carve or to sculpt. So sculpt the speaking panels. You 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 that is the the speaking panels. And why it is speaking? What, who are they speaking to? That is the something that you know. And also. The same, um, the, the two inscriptions, but this, this is another one. Chlak the yay. You, you sculpt speaking, you know, or uh, sculpt narratives. And I'm, I'm jumping into the modern time, if you go to the, the Buddhist monastery or something, you see the mural painting. You know, like you go to worship hall, and you see the, the levels, 
you know, like someone, someone. And but there is a small uh, handwriting or um, writing saying "nikka." It means this is when, you know, like this is when. It means to tell or at least to remind you of something. You know, remind you of that. Uh, so this is my, uh, my 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 try, my attempt to see whether the 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 Barry leaves are you know trying to speak, trying to tell really um, the narratives in that case. So this is the main questions that I'm looking for. Of course, they are they are Barry leaves. You go in temple and you see. But what inspired the sculptors at the time? What what are the source of inspirations? What, 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 why are they choose picking up this theme? Why not? Why not the others? Some of the Indian scholars, Vasutha Narayanan, she was surprised <laughs> by seeing Cambodian was so obsessed with uh, the churning of the Milky Ocean. She said, why, why, why is that? And you know, and then you, you can, if you, you attempt to understand that there's some reason for, for that. There, there's some reason for, for agrarian society like Cambodia. That, that's, a, that's another uh, question that we can trace to, but, but that, that's something like that. What are those uh, source of inspirations in that case? In the ways that I'm trying to look at, I'm trying to look at this. I'm not using only, you know, Hindu mythology book, Indian Hindu mythology book, but I try to understand, looking at the inscription, you know, like that happened at the same time, uh, using what is the ritual, you know, like all kind of sources that in order to help me understand what was the reason behind it. This is one of the examples, very example. This is the argument between endologists, you know, like uh, they, they're working on it. This is one of the very Uncle Wat again, because it happening. They ask the question, because in Mahabharata and Ramayana, there is a story of um, marriage competition, you know, like uh, it's bowl competition for a groom, uh, for uh, a groom, and this is, it, this is the, the scholars try to ask, is this the Swayambara de Traupati, it's in, in, in Pali, you know, in, uh, in, in French, Swayambara is like uh, the, 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 the contest, of in, in Mahaparata or in, uh, in uh, Ramayana, some say, oh, in Mahaparata, why, because, Arjuna shooting an arrow at the at the turning wheel like like that, but Arjuna at that time didn't dress like the king, like the the prince because he abandoned from the kingdoms. So those those are the main questions. And when you look at the the, they say okay, if that not the the Mahapar uh, the Arjuna, so who is that? It must be Rama. So when they say Rama, oh Rama doesn't shoot an arrow. Rama break the bow. See. So what is that? What exactly is that the uh, uh, the stories is about? It must be something, and then if you can trace it. I, I I post this. I'm not trying to answer this uh, exactly the the, the the question, but uh, there must be something related to the king himself. So uh, uh, this is uh, you know one of the example when you use the text, the Indian the Indian text and the Cambodian mythology. It's it sometimes it, it's it's awkward. It doesn't fit in. Another question. This is it coming to the question. Many scholars pose the question, why there is a crocodile right there? A crocodile right there. And some say chameleon, you know, like they can transform, but I don't see it as a chameleon. It is a real crocodile with, uh, with something, you know, like. It's not. The Cambodian know quite well, and then I, I'm, I'm sure. They cannot carve, they cannot make the sculpture of lions because they have never seen, but ti tiger or uh, crocodile, I'm sure they can do it. They can do it quite well in that case. And this is why, why there is a, this is the Pikshanata Murti, when the uh, Shiva in the pine forest, you know, like he was naked and testing the ascetic and stuff like that, and uh, ascetic's wife following him, you know, like he's so beautiful. And so <laughs> that is not, uh, that's, some some say, oh, that is just the, you know the way of take it take it for granted, you know, like uh, okay, that's okay. It's just a local invention, you know, like that's a, a local invention. Of course, it is a local invention to my interpretation. They say that there might be some proposed uh, the, the the local myth saying that that is the um, Ravana transform himself into 
a, a, a lizard so that he can listen to the code that break into the, the house. But actually, no. If that is the, the, the um, Ravana transform into, uh, he listened to Andhra, he is at the Andhra palace listening to the code because at that time they have the, you know, like a digital code and then <laughs> press in and uh, they go into that. But so that is what some proposition. But if that's so, why there is another temple in Prasad Pravan? Vishnu himself, not Indra. You can say that, you know, maybe Indra, but this is not Indra. This is Vishnu. Why there is the crocodile again? You know? And again, this is the crocodile. And again, this is a, a woman, a woman, right here. W why there is a crocodile on the top? This is, and, and that is from my observation. When you see the crocodile, you see the door frame right here. You see the door, the door frame, and here also the door frame, I, I'm not able to, to show you here. And you, here you see the door frame, and here you see the door frame. I study some Sanskrit, so I'm familiar with some words. And it happens, it happens that the term Sanskrit term nakra, it means both. It means crocodile and it means the, the, the upper timber of door frame. I don't know why, why you know, they, they, they have it happens. And I look into, you know, like it might be um, uh, uh, elucidated or something, but, uh, and then I look at modern time, you know, like looking at another example in, a, in the contemporary practices. There is a place, you know, like this is the joke, and on that part, like right here, it's called Kaba Kapu. You know, it's called Kaba Kapu. I'm, I'm trying to explain that. In Khmer, the, the beam, the, the beam on the door, the door, the, the, the upper timbers of the of the door, it's called Knum. It's just like Num is this, and it is the derivatives of that term. So it might concretize what I thought, you know, like uh, it's um, sub, um, substantiate what I, you know, like uh, I think, but I'm not quite hundred percent sure that that is exactly the same. But I think this is something that can I play with words because I see other examples too in, in that case. This is another, you know, like it, it's not a play, exactly the play of words, but it is the, t you know, this is the Vishnu Trivikrama, you know, the name inspired, the, the, because uh, this is the, uh, the names of this, the god of this temple is called uh, three Lokyanata, I mean the master or the lord of three worlds. And uh, being the lord of three worlds, at one point narrated or tell in Hindu mythology as the Vishnu Trivikrama, meaning Vishnu uh, with three pace, you know, a pace, he step one, um, one pace cover uh, the universe, um, the, uh, the earth, uh, the, the, the heavens, and then the other part it is just on, on the waters. And so there is the Vishnu with um, so I think the names itself inspire this, the, the, the scouting of this, or that scouting of this can inspire. So it, it might be something that is, you know, like working in, in the ways at that time. And other things. This is also just to give you, you know, like that kind, some kind of uh, um, approach or methodological how to, the ways that we, we learn history or uh, interpretations of the, the site and stuff like that. So when you go to Uncle Tom, the, the, the capital um, in the 12th in the 12th century, Uncle Tom itself in in Uncle area, when you walk by, you walk by the giant uh, causeway. It's called Giant Causeway, the giant. And for those of you who are familiar with um, Hindu mythology, you might um, you know it tick in your mind, knowing that this is the churning of the milky ocean. Exactly the same, exactly. It is the churning of the Milky Ocean. But when you closely observe at it, it's two Nagas. It's not one. When you churn, you use Vasuki. The Vasuki, the one that churned the Milky. But this is two. Why it is two? 
some interpretation is pretty straightforward. It's saying that Paul Mus or Zoxedes saying that this is the passage. When the passage there is two nagas symbolizing the symbol the, the rainbows. The rainbow is the passage that lit from earth to heaven. And that's correct. Because inside the temple it's called by Yuan. By Yuan it is the name that is given uh, it's it corrupted way or Cambodian pronunciation of Sanskrit Vajjayanta, it meaning the palace of Indra. Which is exactly the same, you are going to heaven. And what is the point of having the giant with the Nagas? The question is asked, I, I ask it, why? Churning of the Milky Ocean, the, the, the ultimate goal is to have the Amrita, something that make you live or eternal, eternity, you know, like uh, immortal, uh, immortality. So that is the bottom, uh, the, the, the bottom line of churning of the Milky Ocean. It happens, the temples that have this kind of design, there are only three to my knowledge. One is Prakang in Angkor, the other is Banti Chuan and, and Angkor Thom. There are three. Why I'm raising the three of those sites? Those sites are associated or involved with attack or the battlefields based on the inscriptions. It means it was attacked. This is based on um, correct or not, but the, the in, um, in 12th century, 1177, there were an attack by Cham. And so this, this is, might be the design, a, a ritual design, architectural ritual design to make the city invincible. Like in Sanskrit, they say Ajutsya that cannot be attacked. So th this might be something that embedded with the, the notion. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn and I'm trying to understand if you have some ideas that we can. Another example that the approach of understanding, the art, the word, the ritual that involve with it, with one another, it links. This is the, the bowl, you can see it. It made out of, they call it a bronze, you know, like a, it, it's bronze or silver, uh, a bowl that is made. But why is that made of, of that bronze? We look at the inscriptions. I, I look at the inscription. There are certain inscriptions of the king that early in the, sixth century, in the seventh century, they say that he conquered places and he made the bull out of stone. What is the point of saying made the bull out of stone or out of silver? What is the point? What, what is the significance in that? It turns out, it turns out the bull is not a simple bull. It is the, the, the symbolizing the dharma. The dharma in that sense, it means order, the, the, the order in the societies. So this inscription saying that he make, what is it? He, the king Ishanavaraman, erected an image of Varusapha, which is the bull, made of silver just like an intact image of dharma. So the bull is the dharma itself. So making the bull, it is kind of in implying the ritual of making the bull so that the society stay in order. That is like, and, and in Cambodia now we don't say, now we are living in Kali Yoga. In, in Khmer we say Kali Yoga, you know, like we are now. But when they, we, we don't say, oh, now we are living in Kali Yoga. If you say that, it means uh, the society is, you know, robbery, uh, incest or whatever the, you know like disorder but when the king come to um, um, coronate it it means that he the, the order of society is, is intact you know like it, it, everything is in order so that is why I think that there's some involvement in, in rituals of this so all of this is to say that you know there are many ways that we can look at it we can understand art through rituals through languages so that is the way that it, it, it can be it can be done another thing you know churning of the Milky Oceans, right? The oceans. And churning, they say, they use a mandara as the mountain. So they, I think Cambodian might be a little bit, uh, you know, they, they might, you know, like many other people, they smart. How can you make the mountain to churn, you know? It must be a stick. And that is a, a stick, you know? Like a, a mandara has become a stick like this, and churn. And it's churn, it inspires, you know, this is the, the, the ocean. The ocean is in the pot. 
Professor Thompson just you know like uh, reminded me a pot maybe it's symbolizing the the ocean as well you know like it uh, receptacles of the water of course but why there might be something playing along that is the idea that's correct when a pot in daily life you churn the butter the butter you know like for the clarified butter especially Brahmins at the time you know like they need the the butters for um, certain kind of of, 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 of of ritual, especially uh, Hindu ritual, you know, like you have you have to put the bottles in the in the fire and stuff like that. So it's very significant. These are the brothers that churning, and it's churning exactly the same. It inspires one another, you know. That 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 is the way that we can, you know, like not straight uh, look from one angle, but we try to understand from different angles. I think it's it's it much much better. And another thing, this is a, a, a ritual. I found it in um, the term, this is the Sanskrit term, Sanskrit word, nirvap, nirvapana, it means to scatter. And in India, I, 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 as I observed and as I learned, when you made the offering to the ancestors, this is the, they, they used the rice bowl, the pinda, mm -hmm. that made as the offering to the ancestors or to the deceased. When you make the offering, you make it just simple like that. But this is to scatter. And in modern time, I'm not trying to say uh, modern time Cambodia is exactly like in, in the past, but there is a, a you know, like connection. It's not, uh, uh, there, there is a continuity that you can see, that you can trace from the modern time that to, to understand the past, the, the, the ancient, ancient time, and then from the ancient time you can un understand the, the present uh, behavior as well. So this is maybe near Vapa, near Vapa the term, that make in the modern time the ritual that perform for the ancestors. It's called in modern time. It's called pyumban. In India, it's called shrata. You you make the performance shrata performing for the the ancestor. This is the the, the rice bowl that you are showing. The term that inspired. You know, like I, I think the term that inspired in that case. Now, let me come to our topics today. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, it, it, it gets a, you know, like, um, but the, the topic is, I'm, I'm trying to look, uh, you know, make my observation of the temple. There are certain temples that they have very specific and very well programmed for construction. Like Bhattisrei, one of the examples of Bhattisrei. I, I think some of you might be familiar with the history of the Bhattisrei. Bhattisrei is built in 10th century by, um, you can call him a royal guru, a, a royal Brahmin. He, he, he has a, his, his blood is associated with, with the kings as, as well. And uh, his name is uh, Jachinyavaraha. He is the royal preceptor, Raja Guru, the, the guru of the, the kings. And the build of this temple, it with in in, in collaboration with his brother, Vishnu Kumara, the name itself, but the temple is Shaiva at some point, but his name is Vishnu. Vishnu Kumara, his sister, Janavi, and his, I don't know the term, god brothers, you know, like uh, Tarama Sampon, Sampon, the binding by the Tarama, it's not by blood, but the binding by Tarama. So uh, those are the sponsors that, of the temple, and that in the main shrine, in, in, in uh, the, 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 the main god is called Tri Purvana, it means the three world, Maheshwara, uh, the lord, the, the great lord of the three world. And in the form of Lunga, we know it because of the inscriptions. And there, there are several other gods that, based on the inscriptions, we know the goddess, uh, Bhakishwari. Um, Vidyaguru, that is the net, that is the image or, or statues that uh, statues or something that is for the guru, and also the site as based on the the inscriptions, it's very famous, very popular. In it, it popular we know based on the inscriptions up until the 14th century that the sites have been visited and revisited with a very special purposes, to get the waters or something. So in, in that, that is the, uh, what we know. The temples, is not, it doesn't mean that it's sustained in a, in a good way, but at some point it, you know, like the deteriorated, you know, the cult, <coughs> the worship is not uh, uh, like it was. And then the king, 
um, Suryavarman II, he, knowing that the temple was not you know, in good shape, he ordered, or he, 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 he gave that plot of land with temples to that uh, one of his guru, so that his guru can restore, restore the call, the worship, and restore the temples based on the inscription. And to restore, and I say that the, the, the Yajnavara is was famous, because they say, I restore, I restore the temple, Ru Ka Komadai An Priak Guru Vung. It's like as if it was the time of that guru at the the the, 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 the first the founder. So it, 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 it you know like it, it from um, 12th century and then traced back to 10th century. It's it's quite a a long and then famous site. And this is also something that I will touch up on a little bit on it. Some scholars, based on those inscriptions, saying that the carving that we are going to look at it in uh, later are not carved at that time because some of the reason that they post they they, they propose were that in India doesn't exist. You know the manual of making it doesn't exist, and uh, comparing to other temple, uh, Prayarup, for example. A prayer room is the built by the king um, um, he, before he died. A year before he died, that temple was inaugurated. Uh, Bhante Sri was inaugurated. So that king, the te his temple doesn't have bari leaves. So why why do we have at uh, Bhante Sri with the very uh, careful uh, systematics like this? So uh, this is one of the reasons why they say, oh, it, it might not be possible. It might be in later period, maybe 11th century or 12th century. So this is the, the main reason. We will, I, will, I will touch up on this. For you, for you of you that have never been to Cambodia, I think most of you have been there. This is Bhante Sri temples. It's a, um, in my advertising, it, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the lectures, I say something, you know, that it, a jewel of my art. It's very, it, 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 it Mignon, it's like uh, cute. It's cute. <laughs> it's tiny, and uh, it it it's beautiful. Worth going. This is a you know the carving. It's very delicate. You know, like it. If you if you look at it, you cannot believe that it is man-made. You know, must be a, a Vishvakarma boom, and then <laughs> make it happen. You know, like it's uh, the carving itself. It's carved everywhere, everywhere. It's like uh, amazing. I'm not advertising for you to go, but uh, <laughs> you better go. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, like just to show you some examples of the um, the reliefs. My observation: this is the the narratives that I observed. It's very systematic, and it it it's clear that there are themes involved in it. One of them is killing themes. And the killing itself, it's not just narrative, but also animals involving, like killing. I will, you will see, we will see the examples. And the other is the purification, that the, the myth, the narratives is used in order to some sort of convey the ideas of purification. And the other is the name of the temple, associated with the name of the temple, or the names of the parents of the founder. I, I will explain to that. This is Bhante Sri, you know, like, um, uh, for in terms of copyrights, I haven't properly saying that, you know, like, this is from where and where, but, uh, you know, that it's from somewhere. But if I'm writing it, I have to put it in, in a proper way. I'm sorry, but. So, I put it A, it's Pac-Man, B is lintel. It's quite obvious. It's killing, killing, killing. You will see. This is the killing of Hiranya Kasipu. Actually, they call Narasimha, but I call it killing of Hiranya Kasipu to fit into my talk. So <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> yeah, killing, killing the boy that's called Kirata Arjuna. You know, Arjuna and Kirata uh, as the, the hunters, they, uh, the, the two fight for the boar. And uh, the killing of Virata, actually, the abduction of Sita, that's what they normally call you know, the, the Virata, the demon, abduct Sita, and then Rama and Lakshmana kill him and um, killing him in order to liberate him. So the death of, uh, I say the death, but the two brothers fighting one another, we will look at it. 
Okay, Th these are the killing. Dancing Siva, you, it's very famous. Dancing Siva is the dancing of destruction. That's the destruction of the universe and recreating of the universe as well. So death and rebirth in, in that uh, connotation. Uh, the killing of, of, of elephant and lions and the uh, killing of the uh, buffalo demons. Actually, that's uh, what they call it. Um, Durgam uh, Hansa Madhini, that's in uh, you know like Indian way. The killing of Madhu and Kaidapa, um, the killing of Kama. Actually, the not the exactly killing, but it is the killing, because he, the Kama was revised later on. It's called uh, Anong, you know, or, or Smrita. Smrita. It means like the one that is remembered. So everyone, uh, the Kama is God of Love. He is remembered when we think about love, it is in you. So that is the, the story that time. Um, the Kili, the Kandi, Kandiva forest. And those are, I will come back to this, but this is the list that I'm trying to tell you where it is and then how it is represented, you know, like in, in the temples. We will look at the images. This is the two places, not only one, two places. Why two places? This is on the, when you enter to the temple, you, you just see it. And this is the Hiranyakashipu, he killed a demon. Uh, uh, Narasimha, the Vishnu transformed himself, um, take a form of neither man nor animals, uh, killing, uh, not without weapons, you know, like a very smart. The, the composer is very smart in that case, uh, the, the writer. Um, so he killed, that is the, the one that is um, here, and this is the other one inside the temple. This is uh, on the, the pediment outside, and this one on the pediment inside the temple. So that there are two of killing. And again, this is two adduction of Sita. Virata is killed. One is pediment from the in, uh, inside, and the other outside. In the cent uh, on the lintel, one is on the lintel, the other one is on the pediment. This is another uh, story. It um, it's called Tilotama. That that is the apsara when the demons is getting enough power that can destroy the world. The gods always trip by sending the beautiful one to tempt them, and then they, you know, the the two brothers doing the ascetic and accumulating powers, and then they fight another one another until they kill each other. So this is uh, another destroy, destruction. And this is another story. The story, the Dancing Shiva. And interestingly, there is a, um, a skinny lady woman right here, a woman here. And it, uh, some scholars say this is uh, Karikalamaya. And some say Aputa, the devotees of Shiva. So I'm not going into detail in that because I'm not knowledgeable of it. And this is the other stories. Normally, um, I forgot the names of the elephant that Krishna killed. Normally, Krishna killed elephant that you can find it in uh, in um, Hindu mythologies. But lion, I don't know. I cannot find it. I maybe to pull the knowledge. Maybe someone can point it out. It's it's very good to learn. But I think maybe. Maybe, this is a maybe thing. Maybe there is some inspirations from the, the earlier period, 7th century temple of Sambo Prekop. There is a depiction of lion hunting king. Hunting is a very favorite uh, theme for the kings. So lion hunting kings, he go, you know, like uh, that story itself, it's not uh, locally invented. First, lion doesn't exist in Cambodia. Uh, second of all, you can find, if you Google it, I also expert in Google, so I find it, that lion hunting king is uh, in, in the Sassanian, in, 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 you know, like Persian, uh, uh, in the 8th century. You can see it, you know, like a dangle, a small dangle, exactly the same. But why the story comes, you know, like to that place? You can, if those who interested in tracing the networking, you know, like that is the point, you know, like uh, why the story come? It doesn't mean like I one day I made it taken and uh, the story come to me. Uh -huh. So this is, I think, it's it combinations of that um, uh, long story that is coming to Cambodia and then 
uh, integrated into Krishna stories. I, I'm not sure about the, you know, like there, there are possibilities like that. This is a, this is also interesting uh, episodes. This is a, you know, like a killing Matu and Gaitapa. And that is Duragam Hansa Maridini. It's very interesting to see, you know, like closely look. Duragam Hansa Maridini, you just kill, uh, you, the, pic, the depiction just show killing the buffalo. But this is not just only killing the buffalo. It, you, you see the hands here? You see the hands? It means the, the buffalo skins only. The deep inside, it is the demon. The demon is come out after. It's like shedding, uh, you know, like uh, only the skin, take out the skin and then you kill it. So this is it. I mean like very, all of this to say, the sculptors is very careful. It's not, they, they don't just like do it uh, right away, but they really carefully executed it. This is another story. It's a burning of the Kandiva forest. It's also killing. You know, the Akni coming to Arjuna, and uh, you can see Arjuna. Here, here is Krishna. Here is Arjuna. You can see the four arms, you know. And Akni coming and say, hey, I would like to, to consume all of this forest. Can you help me? Okay. When, when you are the king, someone is requesting, uh, always grant it, you know, never say no. So they say they grant it, and they they give him, they give Arjun the quivers where the arrows is not, it never been exhausted, you know. So, uh, and then uh, Akni gave um, Krishna his, uh, his, you know, like, um, attribute, his weapons, the, the chakra. And so in this, in this battle, they kill everything. One of, uh, one of, um, I remember one of the Andra's friends is Naga inside, going up to tell that, oh, my child is killed, so can you help me? And then Andra say, okay, my friend, I can do it. And then they send down the train, the, the reins. Arjuna keeping his promise by saying that I will block, you know, like you can consume all the forest. So what can they do? They shoot an arrow. And you see here is the arrow that block the reins. So they know and they, they understand. The, the people at the time, I mean, the time of that uh, construction, they know quite well the stories, how to, ex how to uh, present it into art. So this is something that, that, that we have to think about it too. And this is another story, you know, like stories of uh, uh, um, Krishna killing Kansa. It's a very famous story too. Very well elaborated. And this is the killing, I say killing, uh, um, um, killing Kama. It is the, this is the Kama shooting an arrow. His, his weapon is the tip with flowers and cans and you know, sugar cans. So everything is sweet in the, involved. So he is reducing him by opening his third eye that uh, you know, the uh, um, Kama turning into ashes. But in Cambodian, if you observe, there are many places Cambodian is not satisfied with the um, uh, Shiva turning Kama into ashes. When turning into ashes, how can you see that uh, Kama is dead? They always have the, 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 the body, you know, like the body is down below for something, but not here, because this is the start of the, the destruction. This is one of the things that I, 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 I like you to take a good notice of it. Um, the, uh, the good notice is this is the story of the Arjuna and Kirata that killing the, the buffalo, or the, the, the boar. The boar right here is the, you see the two, an arrow on the corner, and they shoot an arrow and kill the boar. This is very important. Many scholars saying that this is the signature of the builder. The sign why it is the signature of the builder? Because that builder's name is Yachnya Varha meaning sacrificial boar. So that is the name that is uh, uh, embedded in, in this. That's what they, they think. And this is as a repetition of that. And this is another killing again. You know, killing Valin and Sokriva that fight one another. And who is the very, the most angry? The, the, the low-hearted or high-hearted, I don't know how to say, Chapkang? The quick temper. 
Look at this. This is none other but Lakshmana. Look at him. He bite his mouth. Say, brother, why don't you do it? You know, like how can you not doing it? You know, like look at him. He's very, he's very angry, angrier than his brother. His brother actually smiles. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is very. Um, I think one of the one of the represented. Uh, uh, um, release or, uh, or episodes of Ramayana in Cambodia. I, at one point, Cambodia is not satisfied with Rama killing Valin, and they said they 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 carved an in um, um, Chan Sai Devada temple, one of the temple in 12th century. That when he died, the Apsara pulling him up, you know, like flying to heaven directly, B because they're not satisfied. I think in society they. They also critique in that uh, episode, but they like it. They represent it very much. Maybe they like to critique the gods. And this is, you know, some sort of killing a man. I'm not quite sure who is that. Many scholars say, you know, just uh, go to get away, saying, oh, that must be because that is the fighting between a man. That must be Krishna because Krishna like playing. But this one, I doubt why he have three legs. You know. Um, only, only one person that I, only one figure in in Hindu mythology is Bringu that have three legs, you know, like. Uh, but it doesn't fit in that story. So, anyway, killing again. <laughs> the theme, and this is a the theme that is, uh, it's killing of Dush Dushasana. It's very, very. This this killing is very powerful, even in. Uh, this is an excerpt from Mahabharata. It's very powerful because this is the whole story. I'm taking, this is another 11th century, this is the 10th, 10th century. This is the, the, the chess game between Kaurava and Pandava, the one that is, um, you know, infatuated with gambling. Look at him, you know, like this is, we can know that who is uh, Duryodhana and who is uh, Justistira. This is Justistira. He lose, you know, like uh, sad, very sad, and they bet the vibe. And this is Duhasana, that um, you know, like pulling the rope from Draupadi. But the rope itself, it's um, based on the story, based on the story, but not in Cambodian story. You see, based on the story, they say that when uh, Eva Duhasana du try to pull the rope, the rope is filling out itself, like automatic rope, you know, like uh, weaving <laughs> by itself. But uh, this is in Cambodia. And who is who? The one that was in love with because uh, uh, you might be familiar with that story that Draupadi married to five brothers. So among the five brothers, the one that loved him the most is Pima. And Pima, seeing him, seeing this guy doing that to his wife, he's very angry. He take a vow, saying that I will kill you in the battle. That is a very powerful message. I will kill you in the. I will tear you apart and then t bring your blood in the battle. And when he in the battle, he tear him into a part and bring the blood. And the people complain, you know, why are you doing this? They say, no, he, you know, like Krishna always saying, telling everyone that, okay, let him do it. Because that is the wow. The wow that he, he took, it's much more than the law. So that is, you know, like when you take vows, it's much more and the most powerful and the most respected than the law itself. This is another Mahaparata, the killing. I say that, that, that the law, this is a Cambodian representation that you can really see that how can Cambodian wait on law and the, the you know, like uh, wait on the law and the vow. Here is, you can see Arjuna and then the Pishma. No, no, sorry. Arjuna and, uh, not, not Arjuna, Pima and Duryodhana, they fight in the last, uh, when the Arjuna is hiding and then they say, okay, come out, come out from the pond. We have to do the, the dual, dual fighting. So when they fight, Krishna, um, uh, Pim, try to hit below the waist. By the law, they say that you're not doing that. You, you're not allowed to hit by the waist. And who was mad? It is uh, Krishna's brother, Balarama, saying that you are doing that is wrong. You're not supposed to do that. But then Krishna, to show that he is the most powerful, Krishna in that form is not in four arms, you know. But this is the Cambodian showing, this is the real Krishna, you know that? 
This is the real Krishna. Four arm coming out and stop his brother. That was the vows that he took. He said that when Draupadi was about to come out of the game, uh, out of the room, said, "Hey, lady, come and sit on my lap." And then Pim is very angry. He was very angry and said that you know I will break your thighs. I vow to break your thighs. And then he broke the thighs. And then he said, "This is the vows." And and I, I think that's very powerful in in in, in that context. That those are the stories that I I think more than about 19s depicted in that tiny small temple that you just see. 19 theme about killings. Now we look at it. Not only those, but animals. You see, I I barely see. I I observe temple. I barely see it so much the animal. The two biting an elephant. The other from that. This is not that. This is very, you know, like, you generally see this in, in Klai Temple. You generally see, you know, like a Naga eaten by, I don't know what it is called, maybe some, somebody be familiar with this. They call it, they, they, you know, like, to get away, they call it Makara. I don't know Makara. Makara is the, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure which one is which one. And then, you, you, I think this is, they have its own category. Which one is the most powerful one? In that representation of that temple, we can take it as a model. That is, the, you take it right now, Makara, and this is they might call Gacha Simha, you know, the lion with the, the elephant. And then Garuda and Naga eating. But that's very simple. This is a very interesting. This Makara that we, we know has a trunk. You know, I don't know. Gacha Makara, <laughs> if I might invent the term, Gacha Makara. And the lions with four arms, you know, eating or something, but this is the trunk that, you know, pulling him, pu pulling the, pulling that uh, lion apart. And this is also, this is triple, Makara, Garuda, and Naga. So yeah, there's themes like that, it's, it's represented. And, why? You know, like someone is killing something out of nowhere, you know? We do not know what stories it is. And it is represented the killing. And that is the question, why it is the killing in, in, that, in that context? Beside that, there are also two, I, what I know. That is the Gacha Lakshmi, the, you know, the lovely one. That is the Gacha Lakshmi. When you walk inside the temple, you are going by, purified by the Gacha, the elephants, with the, the, with the, with the pots, you know, like pouring the water in, on that. And this is very curious one. No one, I mean like, uh, you know, if you, you don't carefully look at it, it will slip away. Slip away with a very, to me, I think it's very, it's a big discovery for me when I look at it. When you look at it, it is the <coughs> Garuda, and and this is the Andra on the um, on the elephant. It's quite normal. Andra is on the elephant. You know, sometimes he sit in a in a in a calm position. But when you see this, he's going into the battles, right? It's not it's not simple. He's going into the battle. He he about to throw his. Uh, Magical Vajra, the, the thunderbolt uh, weapon. Why is that so? You look closely at the Garuda. Garuda is holding a pot. What is that? If you're familiar with the Indian stories, you might, you might, it, it taking into your, uh, your mind and say, ah, there is a story. It's called Amrita Graha, stealing the Amrita. Why it is depicted here? Then again, why you are choosing that thing, you know? This is uh, the depictions of, uh, of that. You see, I try to highlight it from that small. You can see it, right? And then also, Garuda is, you know, amplified. You know, his head is big, and then he is the big, a big man right now, eating a, eating a, a, a Naga, his brother, actually. He hate his brother, actually. <laughs> this is the, another story. Let me tell you a little bit about why I why I, I am I'm trying to present this. The temple itself is called Tripuvana Maheshvara. You know, like it, Maheshvara is the, the, the great Shiva. 
of uh, the, like the three world. And this is based on the inscription. You look at the inscription, you see the inscription saying of, of Jaxnya Varaha, saying that he abide by the rule. I don't know what rule, what kind of rule is it. He made a statues of his to, to increase the tarma of his parents. The statue by name Uma Maheshwara. He made the statue of Uma Maheshwara for his parents. So specifically, that temple at one point, it have funerary associated. So his parents died, but died at the, the, at the place of God. So they are deifying him, they, uh, deifying them to be the gods. So they promoting their, their, their status in that case. This is general, the general Uma Maheshwara. So Shiva and, and Uma, you can find in, in many other uh, countries who believe in, uh, um, you know, like um, Hinduism or, or Brahmanism. So you can see that kind of uh, Uma Maheshwara. But this one is very interesting because you see that uh, she is going up. I will show you here. Why Uma Maheshwara? There, there is something that they play in it. They play in that temple. To make that Uma Maheshwara, there is an episode saying of the shaking of the mountain. It's Ravana that going to see, oh, I'm going to see my, my Lord, Shiva. And then when he, by the temple, by the, the, the Kailasa, he see the guardian say, no, 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 you cannot go in because uh, my Lord is having fun with, my, he, with his wife. And then he said, no, I have to go. I have an, an, an emergency or something. And then he's by inciting by one of the uh, Rishi, uh, Nirata, I think. Uh, I forgot his name, but one of the... He shake the mountain. When he shake the mountain, uh, Shiva was mad. And then um, um, Uma was very scared and jumped into on the laps of, uh, of, of Shiva right there. And Shiva put a toe on that mountain and crushed on Ravana. And that's why he is called Ravana because of the, the name itself is called Roaring. He roaring for a thousand years so that he can, you know, like please uh, the God um, uh, Shiva and then Shiva release him. So that name Ravana is from Roaring the play of words in that in Sanskrit and South. So this is very important to see shaking and I make the comparison for you. You see, this is the Uma Maheshwara. Look at the lake. And this is inspired, you know, the story that depicted and tell you that is there is something inside. It's very interesting to see how you know, like uh, they are not manipulate, but you know, like how they skillfully put it and then present it in, in that way. And not only that, I, I, I like to uh, provide you a little bit more of the information. You see these animals? Uh, the animals with uh, the, uh, no, the, the, the human body with the heads of the uh, elephant, heads of uh, Garuda, heads of the monkeys, and heads of the all of those are the inhabitants of the Kailasa or Meru if you refer into the temples. It's not only that on the on the on the on the pavements, but it represented the temple itself. You know, like you have it you have the small figures right there. That monkey man and that Garuda. You know, like they they they, they try to make you believe of course they believe themselves that they are the, the those are the the Kailasa, the where, where we live, but they make all of us right now believe that this is the, the real Kailasa at that time. So they make those inhabitants by showing, uh, uh, make the small figures sitting around the, the, main, the main temple. So in, in conclusion, I think it's about the time, right? Okay. I'm not talking too much. <laughs> Your English is shining as I, as I expected. Ooh. I'm glad. I hope you understand it. <laughs> so what I'm, I'm trying to conclude here and, and uh, conclude in the ways of learning, you know, like we, we try it, not, not the final saying that is, you know, like the total, but that, that's my conclusion. 
In biography of uh, Judge Navarro, it's very interesting. He is very learned based on the inscription itself and based on the historical event that you can piece together. That is to say, he's very learned. Very, he, he can speak many languages based on that inscription. Of course, he can speak Sanskrit or, or read Sanskrit, but many other languages based on that. He is the composer of the uh, a playwright. He's a playwright. And um, and he's very powerful, you know, in society. He's uh, a royal guru, uh, a royal preceptor, you know, Raja Guru. It means he's very powerful. So, what I believe that the temple itself is the selection of the theme. First of all, it is inspired by his name. One, his name that is play, that is play in that uh, uh, construction, you know, like. The, sacrific the, the sacrificial poor, meaning, you know, sacrifice, and then if you, you, you make the sacrifice, you put it on the fire. Sometimes you kill. In, in uh, the Vedic uh, ritual, it's called yupa, the, the post. The post that is put in the middle of some place, and then you kill it. You kill an animal in it. So there might be some association with the killing in that. And why the killing? Why he plays that, if, if that is correct? Why he play with the killing? You see the story, for example, killing Valin. Why he is killing Valin? In the general scheme, in general, in the broad scheme, it is the the ways of understanding that restore the order, like the royalty of the you know, like the monkeys' kingdoms. You know, restore the order, and also the restore the the universal order attacked by Ravana as well. So that is a restoring the orders, and also many other episodes is ward off the. You know the evil spirit, demons, and he himself, his name, Jachnya Varha, Jachnya Varha is the boar, and the boar itself. You know, like in uh, Arjuna, the the killing of the the boar, it happens to be the boar is the the, the demon. Maybe that is the play of his, uh, the play of his name. You know, I you know kill that boar, which is which is within me. It means that I am also purified. You know, like that, I, I think, I, I think, it might be something to do or something to play with it. And it, it was, I think that uh, getting the uh, social order, bike into order, restore the orders and stuff like that, that is the, the, the episode of killing. The other important thing is that, that one of the episodes I haven't seen, I mean like, when I'm not seen, it doesn't mean that it didn't exist. I haven't seen it with my experience. And many scholars ignore the bari leaves, the bari leaves of the, the, the Amrita Kriha. They ignore it, but maybe it, it, it's, it's very easy to skip your eyes, you know, like it, you know, like it hidden somewhere. But the, the, the hidden message is the key, I think. And what is important here, based <coughs> on the inscription itself, based inscription at the time, meaning 10th century, they say that the place is offered it's like the sacred water. Based on the, the translator, the famous Zoxodes, he said that that is the, you know, the special water that the, it used in the royal uh, libation, you know, like pouring and sacred. And some, in later period, some of scholars like um, uh, a colleague in, in Paris, you know, make suggestion that, you know, that but they say become one of the famous place to get the water for consecration of kings, and which, is, which makes some sense, you know, like uh, uh, Amrita is down on earth, Adventisrai, you know, and then uh, Gaja Lakshmi, I mean, like, oh, I cannot put Gaja Lakshmi into that context very much, but there, there is something associated with it. And um, the other part is the recitation, you know, like uh, you have all of those, all of those uh, episodes in various episodes we display on the temples. All of those are also recitation as I quoted, you know, like uh, from the inscriptions earlier. You know, it's, uh, it's some, somewhat related to, to that uh, uh, notion. And also, I, I think, that is just, you know, like you can argue with me whatever you want, but uh, it might be his, uh, you know, that my, 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 this is one of my composition. They might do the play, you know, like the theater. So this is one of my essay, you know, like, uh, my play uh, of uh, Valin killing uh, Ravana, killing you know 
one in one episode. So that that's also the mark of his work. Another in interesting before going to that, you see the site small as Bantes, right? It is the there is no anger between uh, Vaishnava and Shaiva, those who worship Vishnu and those who worship uh, Shiva. And you can also see that there is no argument, oh, uh, Ramayana it might be related to Rama, Rama might be related to Vishnu, so I don't. And I think it might be something that, that is, the, that is our story, Cambodian story, the, the story that accepted into the society. You know, whatever gods you worship, or whatever god you propitiate, but those are the stories that uh, exist in the society. They take it as all of their own, on, uh, for, for their own. So, lastly, that I, I said, when some scholars say it is about, you know, um, uh, the temples might be, the carving might be later in that period, I don't think so. I, 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 I tend not to agree, because I see the dress, you know, like some art historian, they might look at the dress carefully, this calf like this, and that calf like that, and then when you match, and then I match the statues with that, uh, uh, the, the bar leaf on that uh, pediment, exactly the same, you know, if the statue might not be remade, you know, it from the ninth, the, from the 10th century, but, and then uh, the, the bar relief is exactly the same, the same dress, the same thing, so I think it might be at the time, but if, if I'm not, you know, like, if it, it might be, have been correct, it means that the society accepted the, the tremendous, uh, they have tremendous respect to Vajjajnyavara, huh? because, you know, like, uh, whatever carving existed in, in, in previously, they use it, remake it again. So, just like the inscription say, Ru Ka Prehariyajikru, you know, like, it's just like the time of the royal guru back then. So, I would like to finish my... Um, and thank you all for um, for attending. We're going to ask you to attend even longer um, because we, I, I forgot to mention the opening that we have a reception this evening. Uh, so we have this room until seven, so we have a little bit less than half an hour for questions, but we, we can then overflow with our questions into the, the common room, which is on what floor, the second floor? The first floor. The first floor. Um, yeah, not my forte. On the first floor, um, we have a reception. I'm actually going to ask a few people who are helping, helping in organizing that. It might be worth going down there and doing that now because otherwise we risk other people eating our food. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, Heidi's already gone. Okay, so Heidi's gone now. So, yeah, so, so. we're also having, um, sorry, I'm just going to do a little advertising and let you rest for, for one second while I do this. Um, we're also um, going to have a book sale this evening. Um, and the book sale is, um, is a set of publications that come out of an association that Sophia, myself, and another of um, uh, a, a number of other people here in the room are involved with. It's a local NGO in Phnom Penh that uh, supports uh, research in the field of art history and associated, associated uh, cultural historical areas. So um, most of the publications are in Khmer, some of them are also in English. I think that's it, our range. And um, so we would encourage you not only to, um, to look at the, the, the work on offer, but also um, to think about possibly um, supporting the association. We do have some information on the association as well. So it's something that those of us who are involved with the Department of Archaeology um, in Phnom Penh are very engaged with. The association is called Nisafor. So, um, so that's on offer at 7. Right now, I'll turn you back over to Sapiavit for your questions. I imagine there are many, so, so um, the floor is yours. Where to begin? <laughs> yeah, I was quite intrigued by the idea of, uh, of um, purification. And I'm wondering if you can extend that maybe um, in terms of the iconography to, for example, when you say killing of Kama, the killing of, you know, like in Hinduism, you kill, you know, Kama, Krod, Lod, Moha, Hankar, you know, those five 
or you could call it five poisons. Mm -hmm. So would you say that could be possible, that it could be meant in that symbolic way rather than strictly literally? I, I think the... Um, I'm, 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 I'm not quite sure about that, that time, you know, like, but meditations or ascetic form might exist. And I think they might take some uh, uh, very close to Bandit Sri, there is a site called Mount Gulen. There are caves that ascetics are uh, seated over there. And I think that, that ideas might be involved in, you know, like killing what is inside you and then so that you purify. And I, I think, of course, the Yajna Varaha is one of them. And then that's my, 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 my sense of what he used the Hindu mythology of killing the boar, the boar that symbolizing the, the evil. It is, that is that there's something that he liked to, you know. And I, I, I happened to uh, read some inscription in, some, in, um, in, 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 early, in earlier periods, you know, like saying uh, some, some of the Brahmins, you know, like he have no desire. You know, like they, they say something like that. But his only desire is to have the, the fire of lighting to bury, to, you know, like, um, to bury his, to, to burn his corpse, to the body, and also to reach the world of Brahma. So I have no desire, but I, I have one. You know? <laughs> so, but, but of course, I think that those ideas of killing all the, you know, like, uh, lust. Um, um, uh, yeah, yeah, prize and stuff. Like that. Yeah, I think that for Yajnavalta himself, I think he might not take pride because he is the king himself. You know, he he king in the ways that he is the the the, the grandson of the king. You know, like the grandson of one of the king. You know, like the two king previous to that one. I visit the site and, and you know every time I go and I see the different thing. The same spot, exactly the same. And then you will notice, ah, this is something. But that, that you have to build from the local knowledge. You know, like you have to be familiar with oh how people making the ox cap like right there. What is it called? You know, like you have to be familiar with those contexts so that you can come back and then it will provide you. I, I don't know whether you can go and then, okay, I look at this, but I think it's repeated um, activities to episodes. For example, I, I just mentioned a little bit about the churning of the Milky Ocean. It, it's very, you know, when, when you go and then you see people playing a tackle war, you say tackle war, but that's <laughs> not only simple tackle war. What I see in Cambodian playing it, they play it to break down, to break open the new rice cultivation season. Invite the, the churning of the Milky Ocean involved because the churning of the Milky Ocean to get the water. You know, it makes sense in that. It's, it's so much involved. And why it's so popular in Cambodia? Because, uh, not in India, because Cambodian is agri 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 agricultural societies, and I think. And ch uh, the tag of war is not only in Cambodia, in Korea, in Vietnam, in Philippines that they have nothing to do with the churning of the Milky Ocean. But the churning of the Milky Ocean make, too much, make so much sense to that communities, you know, that the, the game itself pre-exists the Indian existence of the churning of the Milky Oceans. Okay, I, to, to come back to, to Miriam's question about how, how do you see it? Do you, do you walk along and see it or do you see it? I mean, it seems to me that there, in some ways there are very different examples of very thinking about the architectural structure in relationship to the narratives um, makes you think differently about things. If we were to take uh, some of the Angkor Wat, so let's say the hell scenes at Angkor Wat, um, where there's an indication of a flow, mm. right? There's a flow of people and there's actually a legend that gives you an indication of a direction to follow. Mm. Um, and the, that link and the corridors uh, are Jaime Gay, mm. right? They are what in the 16th century referred to as speaking panels or panels of narratives, mm. sculpting panels of narratives. Whereas what you're looking at at Bantis today, if I were to try to say, 
how do we conceive of that as flat time making, as sculpting narratives, right? Or as continuous narratives. You were associating that with continue, continuous speaking, in a sense, mm -hmm. and, which a narrative is, right? Mm -hmm. It's a flow, it's a sequence, it's a. Um, you don't have the same composition, architectural composition, and sculptural composition that that encourages narrative and encourages that walking through, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, it's a, what you've shown us are the set scenes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if I were to say, if I were to try to make sense of your proposition of kind of your anti-Robert Brown, sorry, Bob Brown, um, <laughs> proposition um, that it is about the story, mm -hmm. okay? And therefore it is, Find it, yay. It, mm. is, it is continuous. Mm. That's where I come back to your very interesting proposition that he's a playwright. Mm. And this could, this is also potentially, I mean, there's a big leap, a big speculative leap made mm. here. But to think about that as um, these particular episodes are also associated with the longer story which is being told, mm. and which it's, it's being evoked, mm. but it's also evoked as a telling, as a playing out, mm. in a sense. Mm. Um, and that's who he was. Mm. He was an incredible scholar. He knew all of these things, and he wrote plays about them. Mm. And this is a performance of that, mm. um, of all of that work, mm. in a sense. So there, in, in that sense, there's a pint of yay. Yeah. Um, but it's quite different from Ankhola, from that, from or the Ankhola or the Bayon, the sort of, or your, your wonderful panel of coming up to the end, and then you see the back of the characters, mm. they're moving in, right? Mm. So and they encourage you to go up to the mm. to the to the, to the next eyes. part of the story, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, it's quite different from mm. from Antisve, which is bitty in that way, that's right? right. That's um, right. so anyway, that's trying to think of those sort of different modes, but which are related somehow. Um, I, I think uh, you know, like uh, like um, Professor Thompson just explained, it's like it depends on the temples that you are approaching. But I think the the w if we are to learn more, I think it you know, frequent visits to the site is uh, you know like advisable because I, I I don't learn it from the beginning. You know I I cannot see the the theme I but it's right. You know when my first visit, even I I I lack of some pictures because yeah, <laughs> when you look at it again, oh my God, I missed this, I missed that. You know like oh this is the theme, that is you know like frequent visit, and I visited many many times. I mean, like you go, you have to pay right now for that. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm, I'm just wondering, for example, the narratives in the Venice Three, mm -hmm. like for example the Uma uh, right. Shiva, like he used the token. Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, is that what's the how do you see all those narratives or the, the play around things? You say that is a kind of play, kind of individual artist, kind of creative naughty list to, to put into that. But how much that into the kind of fixture of the, uh, from now on, like Uma Shiva, that position will always have that kind of tone over there. Or is that kind of one or just in that story, some creative individual artist kind of play this one, but then uh, it disappear. But in some other stories, like probably at a certain stage, it become a fixture, it become a protocol, and you always have to play in this way to 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 carve it in this way. So I'm, I'm just, you know what I mean? It's kind of in what stage, and uh, is that a development from individual creativeness to kind of universally acknowledged position that everybody has to follow and lost the individual the original meaning or in the, in the original interesting point mm. of that. I, I think the principle, the main idea is there, you know, like uh, there is no, um, to, to that particular question, the toes yeah. need to be, I think it, 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 it must be like that because that is signified. There is another very interesting uh, Bali leaves on the lintel or pediment, I'm not sure, from Battenborn Museum, you know, like Ravana is crying with the leg like that, and then, uh, you know, like Shiva is pointing. So there, there is something like that, but to m most of my sense about seeing those bari leaves in each theme or each episode or, or, or stories or depictions, 
it might have some varieties, you know, like nuances depend on the artist themselves, you know, like but certain characteristics that you can see it exactly the same. For example, the the turning of the Milky Ocean. Sometimes monkeys, you know, eating something involved in that, you know, like in that story. Why? Because of something that we don't understand. So, but the main idea or the main representation for you to see to immediately know the whole story is there. I'm not better in responding so, to your question. So they are all kind of artists, kind of yes. personal interpretation. Yes. Plays and play around. Yeah. They don't have to be like fixture events. If if you go to Uncle Wat, I mean that is one of the example Uncle Wat the temples, and you see Apsara, <coughs> you can see the play of it. You know, like many different Apsaras. You know, like there there's sculptors playing around with it. And uh, and of course, if you take one thing, I have the the Bari leaves, for example. Of the churning, sometimes they embed it with the fruit, with the uh, the churning of the leaky ocean. Sometimes it is the flower, you know, like. Uh, but make you see it. Sometimes it make like uh, um, the 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 lines like that, but the lines of the wine, the the the, the kind of wine uh, that. Uh, and then at the central, you see Vishnu, but that is the thing, you know, like they can manipulate many things, but. Whatever the the depiction itself make you know, make you realize that this is that story. I don't. I cannot. I cannot explain uh, precisely. I, I need to observe on that. But uh, thank you for raising it. But I think that there's something. The key point that you see, you see that oh, that is the story. But there are there are side uh, show, side event, side information that you can learn from that relieves itself. For example. The, the 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 killing of Balins. If you go to Angkor Wat, and I refer to Angkor Wat because it's very specific, you see the 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 the, the Balin is in on the top, and then but the monkeys is down there. You know, like oh, fighting over there. That is the main thing you can see. But you see monkey, 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 monkey. That that panel of monkeys. Some monkeys doing like this. You know, like like that. Why? Because they Rama is doing wrong. You know that that is the criticism. Sometimes it's quite like that. The Sita is ordeal, ordeal of Sita, you know, Sita is burning, you know, like uh, on fire. Also monkeys doing that. Monkeys are those people, the people at the time. Side show, you know, like, you see that story, of course, but there, there are also information. But I, I mean, to, to your point, that the representation make sure, most of the time, to, for you to understand that what is that story. Otherwise, you don't know the story itself. Then you cannot interpret it. But if you you familiar with that story, you can tell. Oh, and then you say, oh, this is the local invention. Oh, that is the artist, or you know, like adding up into the main uh, story. I should never have said there was reception. People just want to go and have a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, one more question, or shall we? Um, Shall we thank the Southeast Asian Art Academic Program for sponsoring this lecture series? Shall we thank the good And please join us downstairs. Thank you. Thank you.